OK. So welcome. Everybody. To um, the meeting, so before we start, I have something to say. So before we officially begin today's meeting, I would like to. Welcome everybody and let each of you know that it is my intention as your co chair that we create a space here where every member of this council feels seen, heard, respected and valued so that we together can create that same space for the whole MSU Denver student body where people feel confident that we will advocate them. Advocate for them above all else. It is my hope that the council understands the responsibility resting in our collective hands. It's our duty to ensure that we serve the students in all of our service and the initiatives the council pursues. With that being said, let's be officially begin our meeting today. It's Friday, June 6th. This is the second official meeting of the 22-23 academic school, uh, school year of TSAC, the Student Advocacy Council. Thanks for being here. Now on to the agenda. So let's a vote. Oh, well, we can't vote. So just onto the agenda. Um, if you're here, type it in the chat. Otherwise, we'll get on the agenda. So Paul, Governing Documents Committee, do you have any anything to say? So just a short update from the Governing Documents Committee. We have formed our chat in teams, and it remains open to any other council members who um, want to join in on that process. Uh, and as of right now, we're just getting the ball rolling. We're reviewing the communal document and the uh, and the handbook, and we're going right now. My focus is to try and iron out any contradictions between the two, right? So the handbook says we can um, decide whether or not uh, our advisor is our advisor, and then or no, the handbook says we can't. Communal document says we can. So we need to iron out what is just a direct contradiction. So that's one of the focuses I have, but. Really, um, Taylor's been leaving some comments in there, and I've been leaving some comments, and it is still open for folks to read through, comment where you think we should make changes. Um, it's a long document, and so um, it's just going to take time. The work of the committee is going to take time, and I still encourage anyone who hasn't already to um, peruse the document and see if there's any any thoughts that you have. You can add a comment by highlighting and right-clicking on um, the document. I'll just keep it short. Uh, as wait, one last thing I'll mention, I guess, is that uh, Taylor had expressed some interest in keeping the communal document um, uh, as it was fairly important to the um, instantiation of what we have now, the TSAC. Uh, I agree. I definitely do think, though, there should be some major revisions. And so we should keep a communal document. Um, yeah, and so that's that's the that's the committee report for uh, the governing documents committee. Thank you, Paul. Uh, say cap. Um, so I have zero updates on say cap. Um, we don't meet to August, so um, if I have any updates, I'll let you know. But um, I haven't heard any word from any of the other say cap reps from the other universities yet, or even the advisors. So I have nothing to update. Um, that's not you're on the. Uh, it might have end up going to say cap. Let's just finish just going through the run of this and then once they do at the later on here because I got you on the uh, the thing down here. So um, I guess the Board of Trustees isn't here. Normally this is where we would get that update. Um, social media committee updates. Uh, Paul, Paul, I think you're the only one here from that. Really, um, we're, we're where we were at, so nothing to update. We're still working on a time to meet. And so um, these past this past week or so has just been a very, very busy week. You can tell by our attendance today um, and so will be convening at a time uh, in the future, probably the next couple of weeks to actually get rolling on the work of the social media committee. We haven't really um, done a whole lot at present, so nothing new. Okay, so now on to the CSGC representatives. I can take on to that. So basically that's the Colorado Student Government Coalition. Um, there, there was a new chair and vice chair voted on this last meeting that we had, and they've been putting out some requests for all of the schools. I think there was like 15 or something um, to basically tell the things that are important to that to that university as well as when the ideal time is to meet and all of these things. So, this the representatives us for um, Paul, Mike, Naomi, and I will be meeting up at some point, hopefully soon, to basically figure out what we need to send over to them. You know, our, our ideals are the things we want to uh, prioritize and when is best for us to meet because um, we definitely want to be a part of that. So once we find out more, um, 
we'll get that to the committee. So that's all I have on that. Next we have. I don't think yeah, I don't think the policy advisory committee's here. Uh, Taylor's out of town, Rhea's as well. So we're going to pass on that. Mike, uh, go ahead with the Treasury Committee. OK, so a um, few things here. So I've gone over the last week um, the budgets, last year's budgets, and I've created different um, models and stuff like that to kind of see where we're at this year. Now, um, I am currently we're, we're, um, waiting for the fiscal allocation. So basically, our budget is determined by um, tuition and like how much enrollment is. Um, so I'm waiting on that number, which should get to me by the end of June before I can finalize the budget. And my goal is early July to have a kind of a short presentation to give to TSAC. Hopefully we'll have more people here um, on what, how much, what our budget is this year. So my goal is by early July to have a full budget presentation for you guys, so. Thank you, Mike. Um, I don't believe our next committee members are here. So that's the faculty student faculty and student affairs committee so we'll pass on that today um what about alan or paul have you guys uh, have an update from the covid response committee oh, i can't hear you alan careful sorry we haven't talked about it at all um we haven't talked about covid response committee we haven't met you want to set up a time where we can meet paul or sure what do we what exactly is the covid <laughs> Yeah, I, so essentially, I can I can speak to that on to that somewhere else or yeah, I can I can speak to that. So it's my understanding that the university has a COVID response team and our role will be to sit on that committee. And so you and I well, well, I, I think we should talk to Dave or, um, you know, our uh, our advisor to try and figure out when exactly um, that committee is meeting and we'll join with them. But yeah, it's we like don't really have anything to report. Oh, can yep. you hear us, David? Sorry, what's that? Can you? Oh, he's just asking. Covid yours. response committee. Covid response. I no, I do not. Um, that was a committee that Jeremy was on last year, um, and he he went to they. Well, for a while they were weekly meetings, and then uh, they changed their frequency uh, once restrictions were lifted. Um, uh, Dr. Barone might have more information on that one. I wasn't involved with that really. Uh, Jeremy just gave updates at each Friday's meeting. Um, I, and he may be the best point of contact if we're looking to fulfill that role for next year. Jan says he has contact info. I think, uh, Paul and I will just take it and we'll go from there. Let you know next week. Perfect. Oh, okay. Oh, hand, thank you. Sorry. I don't, I mean to like turn it on and off. It just was glitching for a second. So okay. thank you. Thank you, Dan. Um, I, I just want to say for the COVID response committee that uh, I'll get in touch with Dr. Barone. We will. I'll, I'll talk to you, Alan, about a time where maybe we can meet if that's something that's necessary or if we'd just be meeting with Dr. Or with Dr. Barone to talk about when they have these meetings. But we'll have more information by the next council meeting. So it won't be nothing new, but it'll just be an idea of what our participation in that committee will look like. Sounds good. OK, so the last one of our updates is from, I guess, Dave, our, our advisor app update, potentially our last one from Dave. Let's hear from let's hear from you, Dave. Awesome. Uh, yeah, potentially last one. I will say um, in terms of updates, so uh, Armando uh, starts on Monday. Uh, that's his first day. And then Tuesday through Friday, he's at the NACA conference. So a few of you that are attending, I think Michael, Dan, who is the third part? Paul? No. Yeah, yeah Paul. Yeah, um, should you, You'll probably see them there. Uh, Dr. Barone is also attending uh, part of the conference. She's on vacation, I think, for the first day or two. And then so she'll be there uh, towards the end of the week. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. So really, I mean, for Armando next week, really Monday is just going to be his new employee orientation through HR. Um, you probably won't see or hear from him besides the conference um, for that first week. Um, but he, um, we we do have plans. Uh, I think it's next Friday on our calendars. Dr. Brown and I are in Roy, uh, who's Armando's supervisor. Uh, we'll be meeting with him to to do a transition meeting. 
um, to, you know, just kind of get them up to speed on things and, um, and come up with a plan. Uh, I anticipate that the transition will probably take uh, the first month um, or first few weeks. Uh, and so there's a chance that, I mean, there's a good chance that I might be at next Friday's meeting and the next couple um, with Armando to, to kind of just um, get him settled in. Um, but yeah, we'll, I'll be meeting with him quite a bit. Uh, he, his office will be in Tivoli 305, um, right next to, you know, the kind of the front door there. So, um, y'all should see him around quite a bit. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for more info on that. Uh, the other update, uh, let's see what else I have. Not too much. I did reach out to one of our vendors to get quotes. Uh, for the tent top and the tablecloth. I haven't heard anything back yet, um, but I did explain to her kind of what we were looking for and to give us uh, some proofs. Uh, once I have those, I'll I'll share those with you guys. Uh, and then, you know, there y'all can kind of deliberate and, you know, uh, um, I, I do know typically we have options for color schemes, you know, so if you're looking for, Traditionally, I think we've gone with a blue table cover uh, and then the tent cover can be white, blue, red, any of the MSU colors. Um, so that's kind of up to you. I, I do like the red um, just because it, it attracts attention and it's very visible. Um, but yeah, more on that later. We'll get a design in there so you all can take a look at it in a proof. So um, stay tuned on that. Uh, sometimes I, I will warn, uh, sometimes with the vendors things can move rather slowly so um it, yeah it, it it i anticipate it'll be a couple of weeks before um you know we have a design and a proof but stay tuned i'll um once i have something i'll send it out to the email the tsac email so everyone gets a copy and then i think that's about it um met with michael Paul and Dan yesterday uh, to give a budget overview um, and and really just give a, a good sense of kind of where the budget comes, how much you're looking for or how much we're looking at for this next year. Uh, I went over the budget spreadsheet and um, kind of got the ball rolling there. So um, yeah, I think I see there's questions. That's, that's really all I had for this week. Um, I didn't, there's nothing else. Oh, uh, president's dinner. So uh, I forwarded an invite. It's way in September. I know it's a long ways away, um, but save that date. So uh, Dr. Simpkins, uh, President Davidson, and then uh, provost, uh, the provost, and I think there might be one more person in there. Um, yeah, provost Tatum, and then the advisors, um, are all going to, and then TSAC, of course, uh, it, they're going to take you guys out to dinner, uh, to network. Um, this was on the list last year. So TSAC uh, really expressed the desire to be more involved with senior leaders in conversations, meetings, you know, bouncing ideas off of each other, um, really staying informed. And we started to get the ball rolling on that a little bit. Uh, so Dr. Davidson and Dr. Simpkins came to one meeting. Uh, and then Dr. Simpkins, I think, came uh, to one other. Um, but um, really, the goal there is to was to and hopefully continues to just increase engagement with senior leaders and and be more involved with decision making. Um, it, they're still learning. So uh, some of you might be aware uh, when it came to the tuition and student fee increase that that was passed by the board uh, just a few weeks ago, um, they actually didn't reach out to TSAC for, um, even though we do have a TSAC member on the board of trustees, uh, senior leaders did not reach out to TSAC for for their thoughts on that. And, and so I think it was Gabe or it might've been Jeremy, one of the counselors, uh, voiced their concern with that, and and they actually brought um, or invited TSAC into the room uh, before it went to vote to to kind of gain perspective and get some thoughts from TSAC. Uh, they've assured us now with some of those major decisions 
that TSAC, uh, it'll, they'll be more mindful in bringing uh, TSAC representation to significant decision making where, you know, it's going to involve the student body, it's going to involve, you know, have a significant impact on students. And so um, anyways, this this dinner is kind of a, a step in the right direction, I think. Um, there's definitely more. Um, it's very much on their radar to involve TSAC more um, with with some of these uh, either committees or decision making um, and and these sorts of things. Um, so stay tuned for that um, for more information on the dinner. But that's really all that is. Um, beyond that, I know it's it's their goal. So the president and VP uh, Simpkins, their goal is to attend. Um, I think it's at least two TSAC meetings per semester. Uh, and so that's something else and, and their schedules book up like months in advance. And so that's something that I would suggest um, maybe has worked on over the course of the summer to get um, some TSAC meetings on their calendars. Um, and I'm happy when I meet with Armando and Dr. Barone, um, I'm happy to work, uh, you know, on some of that scheduling with them. But um, just stay tuned for more of that. Um, essentially, they just come to your meetings uh and yeah it turns into a conversation uh, usually the president gives some high level updates and then you know kind of goes into q a and and um so yeah uh i know that ended up being longer than i thought so uh what questions do you guys have okay oh thanks dave uh i like red too by the way <laughs> i don't know how everybody <laughs> feels about that uh, I think the red tents do strike, kind of get more attention. Um, I was going to ask, is it too late for me to register for that uh, conference? I know you were in a hurry before. I forgot to forge you my information. Alan, let me let me see what I can do. Um, I am not sure if 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 it's possible to register you. We will. Um, it does start on Tuesday, so sometimes they they. Um, they discontinue the online registration um, prior to the conference. And so let me look into it and I'll shoot you an email if I can uh, get you in there. Um, and since it's here at CU Denver, um, I can also reach out to uh, Tirza over in uh, CU Denver Student Life. She is involved with the planning um, for this conference. And so she might be able to get me uh, connected to the right person to kind of get that last minute. Um, so stay tuned. Let me see what I can do. Thank you. Sorry about that, sir. Oh, Appreciate no it. Mike. Hey, um, Dave, just one thing. So do you have any word on, um, like, have you heard anything? I know we just literally just met yesterday, but do you have any word on, like, when the fiscal allocation will be announced for this year? Yeah, good. That's a really good question. That's the big question, right? Um, years past, we've heard as early as late May. Uh, so traditionally, the Board of Trustees votes on uh, the proposed SAB budget uh, during their May uh, meeting. And so that's already happened. They've already voted on it. However, what happens now is with the budget office, um, before they release that information, um, I, I think they're waiting on uh, a little bit more time to to get a firmer grip on uh, enrollment projections. And so that's why I think they're kind of dragging a little bit here. In the past, we've we've heard as early as, you know, before Memorial Day, um, before I think last year it was sometime maybe late June. Um, other years it's been almost to the start of the school year. And so it, it varies. Um, I'm happy to, I can ask around a little bit and see if we have an idea. Um, and I'll let you guys know. Hopefully soon, um, we'll we'll hear some. But um, in in the meantime, uh, since Taylor Taylor and Devin uh, were both on the SAB last year, and they may have greater insight, um, it may be worth reaching out to at least Taylor since he's still on TSAC to see if um, he might have more information than I do since he was directly involved. Thank you, Dave. Mm -hmm. Paul. Oh, thank you, Dan. I just wanted to um, voice an idea that had um, come up in a conversation I was having uh, with some with with a fellow counselor and some um, some friends. Uh, it was essentially the idea where we were talking about how much we had voted to approve towards the spending of a new tablecloth and a new tent. 
and we talked about how there's a new sign that we need and how expensive it might even be to replace the frosted glass in the office. And the idea came up, what if we reverted the name of the student government or of TSAC back to the student government assembly, but kept our structure, kept the documents that we have and changed only the name. I think that in doing in doing something as simple as that, we would save thousands of dollars just thousands of dollars and we could do a lot more productive things with those thousands of dollars potentially even if it's just two or three um that we could potentially put into uh something like i we've talked about the food pantry we've talked about funding student organizations um and we could really sit around and brainstorm different ways uh we might be able to do that um and it could save a lot of uh potentially uh, potentially unnecessary work if people would be willing to um, move in that direction, but uh, it's just an idea that I had and wanted to get out there. I know we don't, we're not at quorum or anything, and I don't have anything concretely written out, but I think it's something we should all consider. I, I think that's a really good consideration. Um, you know, I, I do think it, it'll probably be met with some criticism, but yeah. um, I, it makes sense from a fiscal standpoint. Um, and and really as long as the structure remains uh you know the name i you know i i, I think some will argue that that the student advocacy council um definitely rubs off on students differently than student government assembly um you know and and the two titles can mean different things for different students and you know i i think it's something to dive deeper into the conversation um involving the rest of the council um, definitely Dr. Barone, um, because she will have more insight in regards to the name change and initially why and, and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, I would support something like that. I don't, I don't see an issue as long as the structure remains. I, I do like the flat leadership structure and the, you know, sort of, um, shared, shared leadership, shared governance, um, concept, um, but yeah, I, I, yeah, I would, I would have more conversation before diving into a, uh, a vote. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely want to uh, continue those conversations. Um, and it's purely what I propose is aesthetic, you know, nothing I, yep. I too share in your like of the plan structure. Yeah, they're, they're actually, it almost went to a vote at some point in the spring semester. The council had a conversation about, uh, having a referendum go on to the the ballots uh, for election uh, for actually the student body to vote on um, kind of what they want as a I guess a student governance and and the the idea was to a keep TSEC what it is and not change anything B go back to SGA and SGA's old concepts or C have so, some sort of mixed, you know, shared governance, but, you know, maybe changing the name back or, you know, it's a, a mix of both. Um, it ne obviously it never went forward, but there was definitely conversation amongst the old council. Um, and and so I, I do think, you know, it's something to consider. Thanks, Dave. Mm -hmm. Thank you. OK, so now on to the next part of the agenda. This is going to hand this over to, uh, to Paul for the resolution that um, although we won't don't have quorum and aren't going to be voting the resolution they worked on. So uh, go ahead with it, Paul. Oh, thank you, Dan. And so, yeah, I worked on this resolution with Mike um, and we call it the resolution to preserve and enhance public comment. And, um, you know, I, I can give a short reading of the abstract if that's OK with everyone. Very good. Please um, do. So the abstract says we, the Student Advocacy Council, were elected to represent and advocate for our fellow students. Public comment is a crucial platform for elevating student voices to the council. We propose a structure to ensure that student voice is protected. Our change has four parts. First, we seek to extend public comment from 335 to 350, uh, adding seven minutes to the total time given in the agenda. Secondly, in line with Robert's rules of order, we seek to hear from all members of the public who wish to speak before any one member of the public can comment again. Uh, thirdly, we seek to limit the length of public comment to five minutes per individual. And then lastly, we seek to conclude public comment when it's allotted time in the agenda has been elapsed. And 
um, there's some more language that gets to like the the whereas and the therefores, and I can I can send this out to everyone so everyone has a look at it. But that's the gist of it. You know, we had uh, yeah, that's that's it. Thank you, Dan. Yes, of course. Thank you for reading that, Paul. I I, I have a question. Uh, I'll raise my hand. Um, one thing I noticed in there that we may want to uh, adjust is the time, the exact time, because during the school year we may have a two hour meeting. So that 30, the three o'clock thing, maybe we, we instead of putting a specific time of, on the 24 hour clock or just uh, the 15 minute time period or something, something to think about. Thank you, Dan. Um, that's definitely well, if I can respond to that, that's something that I have. Uh, I too have like I, I read that and I was the thought had passed my mind, but I didn't uh, I didn't consider it too much. Now, um, I think that's a rather simple change you should be able to implement. No problem. Thank you for that. Um, is that all you have, Paul? That's all I have on it, unless you wanted to add something, Mike, as a co-author. Um, no, I do have you touching it perfectly. Thank you. All right, thank you. So now I'm going to hand the floor over to our next item um, on the agenda to, to Alan and his idea for um, working with the CU Denver pool. Yeah, um, the reason I came up with the idea is uh, that uh, MSU's pool has been out for a long time. It's a couple of years now. We haven't been able to swim here. And um, I think it has something to do with the moisture in the basement of the church or something. And I know um, <clears throat> Alex, who's not here right now, has some ideas about converting that into something. But in the meantime, I was wondering if uh, maybe, I don't know, um, Mike is the one of the SACAB representatives or someone like that. I think we probably have to ask them what they think about it before we make any kind of a proposal necessarily. But I would like us to be able to share the CU pool. Um, I know we can do that now, but it's 30 bucks a month, kind of like a regular gym membership. They have really nice equipment and everything. I just don't know if uh, maybe um, one of the CCAB representatives can check with CU and see if there's anything we could do with the fees or if they're willing to bend or flex on that or what we can do to let MSU kids use the CU pool, basically. Because I think it's it'd be millions of dollars to fix the uh, MSU pool and it's going to take years. So, uh, you know, I know we can use it now, like I said, but it's a little too expensive. So it's either... Um, I don't know. I know it's free to any student to use the MSU gym, but um, you know, so it's a lot of money for us if if we're already using the gym here just to be able to swim. In other words, maybe we could just get a swim pass or something like that. Could you inquire about that, possibly, uh, Mike? Do you think? Mike, go ahead. Hey, Alan. Yes. Um, so one of my goals, I have like a laundry list of things to do, but is to walk over to the CU office and kind of just introduce myself. And um, I know, I think they're still hiring the two SACAB reps, I believe. Um, if I know if their um, like their ad they put out was um, within time, I believe they're still hiring them. But I do want to get my make myself known over there and be like, hey, we'll be working together on this. Um, if you can do me a favor and actually like give me like type something up, something I can like bring over to them and explain them with. Yeah, I would even um, go with you if you want. I mean. Yeah, exactly. Um, and SACAB, uh, they don't meet till August, but this is something we can definitely work on during the summer and um, be ready to present when we start that meeting again. So Sounds I'm definitely, definitely on board with this. Thank you. That's it for me, if anybody else has anything to say. Thank you. All right, so that's it. Today's a short meeting, that's it. So let's open it up for public comment. If there is public comment first let's read what we have in place each person is allowed one to two two minutes of this public comment as of right now although we can extend it if somebody if a public if people from the public need longer for today is there any public comment here today hearing none going twice okay so per our agenda Oh, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Paul. Oh, I was going to. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off mid sentence, but I was just going to suggest that we uh, adjourn. I was a motion to adjourn. Took the words right out my mouth. All right. <laughs> Is there uh, well, so so here this. Um, so right now we'll we'll adjourn. If anybody objects, please say I now. All right, we move to adjourn the meeting. Thank you all. Thank you. I'll send you all the minutes. Thanks, Dave. Thank you guys. Bye.